and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a puzzle I am very intrigued about. It's called Diagonal Skyscrapers and it's by Blashirk. Now, I have solved a couple of puzzles by Blashirk and I've always been incredibly impressed by basically how clever they are. And this one has been tested. Um, we've, we've had it recommended to us, but one of our testers had a look at it as well. And uh, I had an email this morning basically saying that this is a work of absolute genius and apparently not too difficult. So this this really should be something. Um, I think the tester said something like, I, I, I beg you to record this puzzle in a video. I mean, which is incredibly strong language. You think about the amazing puzzles we get sent every day. We get sent 30 or 40 every day. Yeah, they see a lot of brilliant puzzles. So for them to, uh, or for one of them to say, um, or to give this one such uh, plaudits is really, really unusual. Um, yeah, and we'll have a look at this in a moment, complete with our animation to explain skyscrapers, which was created for us by the fantastic YouTuber Chain Bear. Some of you may know that if you're Formula One fans. Um, anyway, what do I need to tell you about before we kick off today? I will start by mentioning that there is a cryptic crossword video. Friday, Mark and I have been um, taking it in turns almost to do a masterclass solving the times uh, puzzle for the day and today's times was an absolute beast and it was my my job to have a go at it So if you want to see me really struggle check out that video. I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen um, the, But the big news frankly is that tomorrow is the first of July And not only does that mean pinch punch first of the month It means that at four o'clock UK time if you're a patron of the channel get yourselves over to patreon for our Kraken the cryptic Sudoku hunt We've got a brand new Sudoku hunt for you. Um, we're quite excited about this one, actually. I think that it will be very popular. It's got six puzzles in it and then a little meta that you have to put everything together at the end. Um, I don't think it's too difficult. I think it's probably slightly easier than last month's. Um, and we're looking forward to the response. So, so yes, say four o'clock tomorrow UK time. Um, if you want to be in with it, well, if you a if you want to play these puzzles, which I certainly hope you you'll want to do, and b if you want a chance of winning the competition. Um, next, I've got some birthdays. So what I've got some birthdays and announcements to do. I've got two late birthdays to do. I'm really sorry. I I I'm that's this is totally my fault. So Molly, you turned 25 yesterday, um, and your boyfriend Nathan wrote to us in time, and. Little old me got it wrong. So Molly, I hope you had a brilliant birthday yesterday with lots of cake. Um, and then Sarah, over there in San Jose, California, what a place to live. Um, your wife, Kathy, wrote to us. And again, I should, I should have announced this yesterday, messed up. So I hope, Sarah, you had a brilliant day too. On a more timely note, I can tell you that it's Amelia's birthday today. And Amelia has turned 21, what a day. Um, and I know this because uh, I think it's Macarena wrote to us. It could be Macarena. I am not sure how to pronounce Macarena, Macarena or Macarena. So I apologize if I've got that wrong. I'm trying, my brain is sort of ticking over thinking, is there a definite way? I'm not sure. But Amelia, I hope you had a brilliant day, obviously, with cake as well. And then finally, a bit of a different one. Uh, Caitlin wrote to us about her friend Simon. I mean, a lot of good people called Simon. Um, and Simon uh, has just basically graduated uh, top of his year with a physics degree, about to go off and do a master's in rocketry and space exploration. Clever guy. Um, and Caitlin basically thought Simon would like a shout out. Apparently he watches regularly and um, is just about the cleverest person on the planet. So Simon, well done on your degree and very good luck uh, or best of luck with your masters. And um, I know you've made, well, Caitlin is extremely grateful for all the help you've given her with programming, physics, you name it, Simon's got it covered. Um, so well done you. And that's all, that's all. Now I get to try this puzzle. Diagonal Skyscrapers by Blashirk. Let me read you the rules. Fairly straightforward rules if you're used to skyscrapers. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Um, skyscrapers, each digit should be viewed as a skyscraper with height equal to its value. Now that means nine is the biggest, tallest skyscraper and one is the tiddliest skyscraper. And these clues outside the grid 
um, indicate how many digits are seen along that diagonal with higher digits blocking lower or identical digits from view. Now if that's confusing do not worry because Chain Bear made this animation for us a while ago and this explains everything. So this explains how skyscrapers work so let's just pause it there you can see that each digit is portrayed as a skyscraper equal to its height. So the nine is the biggest, the one is the smallest. And then looking from this direction, so this isn't diagonal skyscrapers, this is just normal uh, sort of horizontal and vertical skyscrapers. But if we count how many buildings you could see from this direction, the direction of the arrow, you'd see the two, you'd see the four, you see the five because that looms over the four, but you wouldn't see the one and the three because they're too small. You'd see the seven, you'd see the nine, and the six and the eight would both be blocked out by the nine. So we'd expect this clue to be a five, I think. Let's hope that I've got that right. Uh, yep, there we go. But from the other direction, you get a completely different clue, of course, because from this direction, you see the eight and you see the nine, but everything else is sort of obscured. So this would be a two from this direction. Let's hope that that's right. And that's that's how skyscrapers work. So thank you, Chamber, again for your brilliant animation. I think that really, uh, I mean, it, it makes it very clear. Um, um, now, the only difference, of course, in this one is that th these are going diagonally. So along this diagonal, this will have to be the biggest digit. Um, because if, if it sort of went one, two, three, four, this then we'd see four skyscrapers from that direction and that's clearly going to be wrong so four three two one would be absolutely fine as a possible way of arranging this diagonal now do have a go our tester begged you to have well begged me to, to try and try and record it in a video um, i'm begging you to have a go at the puzzle the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now i get to play let's get cracking and i think we've be, we've we've got a gimme here to be honest because how can you possibly see nine skyscrapers along this diagonal unless it's just a sequential sequence ah it's almost like a thermometer isn't it a nine cell thermometer and i remember that blashik is brilliant at thermometers um and i think i think the last puzzle I did by Bashik was called something like geometry exam number two and it was it was absolutely fascinating um, but yeah I think this diagonal is forced isn't it it's got we, in order to see nine nine buildings we're going to have to ascend very exactly now what can we do with that is it is it ones or is it I'd be a bit careful with this six actually one two three four five yeah you do so this six is telling us that there's all of the buildings along this diagonal are seen except for one so so this six obviously that must be seen because if it's not seen there's going to be a seven or higher earlier on in the diagonal and that will mean one, two, three, four, five would be the maximum number. So if this is a seven, obviously it could go something like, uh, I've got to be a bit careful at the end, but something like that would be possible. But, but hiding the six does not do us any favors because we could only therefore see five buildings. So the six is seen. So one, two, three, so the maximum, so we could see, we could have seen four skyscrapers by the time we get to the six. So we have to see at least two skyscrapers after the six. Okay, but we could easily do that actually. What we can't do, ah, we can't see three skyscrapers after the six because seven, eight, nine is impossible. I think that's just the corollary of saying that we had to, um, well, maybe it's not, but it's, I don't think that's necessarily a huge deduction. So yeah, you don't have to see a nine either. There doesn't have to be, yeah, it's, it's quite different this actually to normal skyscraper logic because normally with skyscrapers, a very useful way to conceptualize the grid is to start thinking about the positions of the nines because the nines cap everything out. Um, but there, there needn't be a nine along this diagonal. 
there could be a 9, and if there is a 9, the 9 would have to be there. It couldn't be here, or we wouldn't see enough skyscrapers, and it couldn't be here by Sudoku. So there could be a 9 here, but there certainly doesn't have to be, because we could see two skyscrapers by going 7 here and 8 here. Right, okay, I think, I think I'm missing the point of this then. Let's try... Oh, right, I had not noticed that, and that is remiss of me. Ah, right, I know what's going on in this. Right, okay. Am I right in the, what I'm about to tell you? Yeah, well, I think I'm right. Um, I've just noticed that this, uh, this sequence of ones around the grid are forming a loop. Now, that feels very, very difficult for me. My immediate, my immediate reaction to that, which might be wrong, but my, my, my gut instinct is that these digits all have to be the same. Because they're forming a cycle. So if they weren't the same, uh, I mean, let's make them 6, 7, 8, 9 or something. Uh, You, this will always break, won't it? And it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. I mean, if let, let's do it. Let's do it sli with slightly more frivolous digits. Let's do all of them as fours, and this one as a three. Now, in this situation, let's see if if this could possibly work. This one would work. Oh well, this one would only work providing these squares were all lower than four or. Actually, they would all have to be lower than 4 because they couldn't be equal to 4. So this one would work, or could work. This, uh, oh, this one couldn't work, I've just realised. But ignore, ignore this box. Let's assume these digits could be low. So that one would work. This 1, providing these two could be low and low enough, this would work. This one would work because it doesn't see the 3. So it can be the king or rule the roost along this diagonal, providing all these digits are low. But this one would break. And it wouldn't matter if we switch this round like that. Now this one's broken because it's all, you know, one of the digits. When, whenever there's a sequence of digits that are not the same, there will always be a digit that is that's lower than one of the other digits. And whichever one of these is lower, it's one clue will be broken. So these clues all have to be the same number. And that means... By Sudoku, of all things, they're seeing a lot of the digits. They are seeing a lot of the digits because they're certainly seeing ones. They're seeing, actually, let's just put in what they, what they, because they all have to be the same, right? We know they can't be one because these two see one. So let's just, they can't be one. Can they be two? No, they can't be two because if they were all two, these two would be higher. And for that reason, they also can't be three because these are at least a four or five pair, aren't they? So in fact, they've all got to be... Yeah, they've got to be at least five because if these were both four, they would see it, we'd see a five at least in one of those squares. Aha, right. So they're at least five. This, no, they're not six. This, this one sees six and this one. So they're not six, seven. They can't be nine. Maybe they can be seven or maybe eight. Because I don't think these are seen. Now, if they were seven. Oh, yeah. And now, now, it, now the world is a much, much freer place, isn't it? Because if these were seven, these are these are never going to be eight or nine, and these don't definitely don't have to be eight or nine. Oh no! <laughs> oh dear. Okay. All right. Uh, you got me. Well done. <laughs> okay. L I think we can work out the value of the green digit here very simply. 
Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. For those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. Um, you've got it quicker than me. Uh, right. Now, I, I always resist this. But sometimes, just occasionally, it is necessary to do Sudoku in a Sudoku puzzle. And if we do Sudoku on this box, where does the green digit go? Well, there are four of green digits looking at this box of the Sudoku. So the green digit goes in the middle by Sudoku, which means these digits are all five. Oops. <laughs> OK. Right, so there's a five in one of those two squares by Sudoku. Now, we're going to have to do more Sudoku. Ah, well, no, this is good. This has to be a four five pair. Because um, if we include any, if we include six, seven, eight, or nine in there, that's going to break this clue. It's going to see the five, and then it'll see the six or the seven or the eight or the nine, whatever's in here. So these squares are all the high digits in this in, in box one. Ah, but there's load the right. There's loads of stuff we can do now because five is very is a very mediocre digit, the most mediocre digit. Um, so these squares all now have to be lower than five because they all can't be five they'd repeat the five in their boxes these have to be five or lower oh that's less good and these have to be lower than five and now we've got some sudoku to do i know i resist it but there does seem to be some sudoku to do get rid of threes from these get rid of fours from these um Hmm. Okay. That feels. Hmm. That feels. That feels good, but I haven't actually. Have I cracked? Have I cracked this now? I love that beginning though. That is so. It's such a clever idea that a, a cycle of one skyscraper clues. It's so original to even think of a diagonal skyscraper, but then to do that with it is just, ah, uh, and, and to force, and, and to, by making this a five, to force these to all be fives, that's so beautiful. It really is a beautiful idea. Now, what do we do next? I haven't got a clue. Can we? Uh, I think we might have to think about these other two skyscraper clues, but I'm 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 nervous that actually what I'm meant to think about here is Sudoku. So I'm just going to spend a moment or two just thinking about Sudoku. Um, right, here is something. Yes, okay. I've got a one, two, three, four quadruple in this box yeah okay look at this diagonal now we worked out didn't we that this six was seen on the diagonal which means all of these digits are five or less but not but they can't be five none of those digits can be five which means these two digits are from one two three and four but because we have to see all of the digits we can't these can't be ones ones wouldn't be seen whatever this was uh, this can't be a two because again it wouldn't be seen and it needs to be this can't be a four because that would cover this digit right so this this can be a maximum of two that would allow this to be a three allow this to be a four we'd see one two three four and then we're able to see two more skyscrapers up here which would be great um now, if this is a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple, the 4 in it, look, is definitely on this side. So that square is not a 4. And 4 is in one of those three positions. 6 is down here by Sudoku. 9 is up here by Sudoku. Six is there by Sudoku. Six is in one of these by Sudoku. Ah. Ah. Ha. 
Okay, I think I know where I want to look next. Let me just think about Sudoku for another couple of moments. And then I'm going to think, look, this, this must be important because we were looking at this diagonal. And I know I've got to fit in some high did. Well, I've got to fit two of these digits are definitely higher than six because they need to be seen skyscrapers. And now I know there's a six in one of these. Yeah, OK, how could that be a six? I don't think it can be because now I have to see both of those skyscrapers. Well, what shall I make this digit? This digit can't be seven. It needs to be seen. So it has to be eight because it can't block the nine that must be there, which couldn't be a nine. So this can't work because because this is forced to be too high. And that makes this impossible because nine is ruled out of it. That's gorgeous. So this this right. So this is the six. And now this has to be seven because it can't be eight and needs to be seen. And then, oh, see, I was about to think I've broken it again. But now that's fine because now eight just slips beneath the nine and is still seen. So this diagonal, we're going to see one, two, three, four, five, six skyscrapers. And now I can get eight here by Sudoku. Uh, no, I can't get seven. Can I get... No, I can't get six either. Although, look, I am doing some work here. N nine. I can get just get just right. Sorry, I can just write nine into box six. I didn't notice that. Ah, so nine in box um, nine in box five is now restricted to those two squares. And these squares have to be from one, two, three, and four, and that's not four. So there's definitely a four in this domino which means that's not a four. So we've got we've got a sort of sim similar thing going on with these two cells, which each have to be from one and three. Uh, let me just mull this over. This clue is going to have to do mighty, mighty work if there's not a lot more Sudoku to be done now. Because I don't think there's any other clues left to use. Ah, come on. What is it we need to think about here? I suspect... No, I can't see. I can't actually see how to resolve that. It must be this clue. Oh, can we put six there? No, of course we can't. Right. OK, let's let's think about this clue. How many cells are there on this diagonal? Oh, hang on. I've just bumped into a nine. Oh, oh OK. This is right. Something straightforward is this diagonal. I need to see five skyscrapers and there's a nine very early on in the diagonal. This is huge. It can't be here because that would only allow there to be four skyscrapers seen. So the nine has to be there, but also now I have to see, now I've got to see all four of those skyscrapers. So this can't be a one or a two. Because if this was a one or a two, it would never be seen. Um, I could make this a one and this a two, but you're not going to see this. It might be another two, but it's not seen. It's the same height. So that's got to be four, which, uh, which does the four and the five. Now there's a wealth of fives looking at box three but maybe not even enough this digit is a naked single <laughs> because it has to be higher than four to be seen and it can't be five six or seven so it's got to be eight which means there's an eight in one of these two squares and the right and now what's going on in this box because these two both have to be seen so we can't possibly have a five here which places the five we can't possibly have a six here because the six would be in the wrong place so that's going to be a six now the five down here has to be there and we still have to deal with these two well this can't be one so this has got to go two three oh this is just it's sick it's absolutely absurdly clever again from Blashirk um ah oh, look there's something interesting here we've got a two here 
and there must be a 2 in my little quadruple at the bottom. So that means there's a 2 in one of those two squares, which gives me another opportunity to think about 2s, because there must be a 2 in one of those. So now there's a 2 in one of these three. Oops, that's not what I was trying to do. I wanted to do that. Okay, that, that, that wasn't quite as profitable as I was hoping. Let's try and do some things in this column. 1s, 3s and 4s at the bottom. This box needs 4, 7 and 9. Where does 9 go? It's got to go here. Which means 9 is getting more restricted in box number 1. These two squares are 4 and 7 and we can do them. We don't get a 3 in the corner though, we get a 4. Um, now that, that seems to place 4 in box 6. If we think about where one goes in this box, you can see it's on the it's on the left right hand side. So one is in one of those two squares now in box number nine. And ah, uh, hang on, no, we can do even better. That's a two. So now at the bottom of the grid, we need a we need a, what it what do we need? Ah, is it no? It's not a six. It's a it's a four. Okay, well, that's good. We can do that. Again, tidy up pencil marks. These two squares have got to be a something, a something, a two and a something, two and a six. Can we do that? So two is here, two is here. So two in row nine is in one of those three and it's in one of those two now. Okay, let's take, right, nine is in one of those two squares. So those squares have become a six, nine pair. So in this row, oh, the two goes here, look, and this has to be from one or three. Ah, to complete the row by Sudoku. So we need ones, threes, and sevens. Let's actually just put that in and see if we can do it. That's not one. Um, and shoot, no, okay, that's not six or eight. Right, so we need to put, there is a three in one of these two squares. I don't think I know which one. I would love to know which one. Three, four, five, six. And these are from six, eight, and nine. So they are restricted, but maybe not quite enough. Although I do have a nine. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, this digit is restricted apparently because if there is a 9 looking up at it from column 6. So that's going to become 8, which gives me a 6 here and a 9 here, which gives me a 7 here. Really beautiful. So now these two squares are a 9-2 pair and I can do that. These squares are a 3-7 pair. Well, I can't do that immediately, but I have noticed I've now got a 3-7 pair in column 5, which is going to make this a 4. And this not a three. Uh, in fact, that's become a naked single two, three, one go into the grid, one and three over here. Come on. Um, so this is no longer three. And we should be able to get this bottom digit, shouldn't we? That's six. That is actually a six naked single. And in this box, we need fives, sevens and nines. So can we do that? Oh no, hang on, not five. I've got five already. Seven, eight, and nine. So the eight, look, has to go there. That's a seven, that's a three, that's a one, that's a one, that's a three. This is seven, this is nine. Two and six are done. I think we're, I think we're actually done almost. It's just going to be a case of... Um, tidying up the Sudoku of all things. This has got to be three... Sixes are, are aligning here, so the six in column one has to be in one of these two, and you can see actually it's going to be there. Have we got a chance? We do still have a chance for a three in the corner. We have got a three in the corner. I've got four threes looking at the bottom row. That's got to be a three. And that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. That's now a two. Um, exactly the same logic. Um, Right, what's that? That's a seven. 
This four is done. Look, four, one is done. We've got to put one in this box. Now we need four and nine, which we can do. That gives us the nine and the six and the six. Ah, no, 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 no. The six and the eight. So that becomes an eight. That becomes a seven. And what do we need down here? We need an eight, definitely, and I think a five. Ah, and we've not done this. That's remiss. And now we have done it, I think. Let's see. Yes. 123 people have solved that in three days. Well, let us hope that that's going to soon be 123,000 people who've solved that, because that deserves to be solved, well, millions of times. That is an absolute banger from Blaschik. <laughs> Again, it is... It's magnificent, is what it is. It is magnificent. It's a simple idea. But basically, what Blaschik does is he turns the wit up to, up to 11 um, and then executes. And this idea with the cycling ones is so cool. And then to just force that digit into the middle by Sudoku, having already specified this ludicrous diagonal, it's just it's just gorgeous and actually then having having performed fireworks like that the selection of the six and five are really clever because i can't remember how we got a six up here but we did and that was absolutely huge for determining that entire diagonal and then the five, the five worked because there was a nine forced into one of those two somehow. And again, it just forced enough digits that the, the, the Sudoku fell out at the back end. Um, that's absolute worldy, absolute worldy, Blashik. Um, take a bow, my friend. We, we should all be applauding you today. Love that. Uh, let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.